For this section, we're going to be looking at equations of lines. So to get us started, we want to look at writing equations of lines, and we're going to have a few different ways that we do this. So the first approach you want to take is doing something called a slope-intercept form. This is the slope-intercept form of the equation, y equals mx plus b, where y is by itself, m is represented of your slope, and b is representing your y-intercept that we talked about in the last lecture. So first, let's kind of take a more in-depth look at our idea of slope here before we move forward with this form. Slope refers to the ratio of the vertical change in y over the horizontal change in x between any two points on a line. It indicates that the direction when a line slant as well as its steepness sometimes has been described as rise over run. This formula here is important. You'll want to memorize this, work with this, maybe make you a little formula sheet as you work through your homework. When you're trying to find slope between two points, this is the formula that you will use. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You'll be able to plug in your values, do your subtraction, and then finally do your division. Most often, your slope will be portrayed either as an integer, like a positive or negative number, or as a fraction. Rarely do we try to convert this into a decimal. Often, your slopes will be defined between these four different slopes. You've got your positive slope. Remember, you read your graph from left to right. So you can see that this slope is going up. You have your negative slope. You can see it's going down. We do not reverse it and say, well, if we go this way, it's going up. You read it just like you're reading a book. So from left to right, you can see it's going down. Zero slope, which is a horizontal line, and vertical slope, has a slope of undefined. I normally keep the difference between these because if you think about, if you're watching movies or maybe you actually go and you ski, they talk about let's go hit the slopes. Well, when you're first learning how to ski, you really don't take on super negative slopes. You kind of take on ones that are still negative, but maybe the bunny slopes, you're learning how to control the skis, how to stop, how to kind of speed up, turn, etc. Um, so you might need to start on zero slope, just to kind of get yourself going. But I always kind of tell students, if you were to go um, on a mountain and all of a sudden it dropped off, such as a cliff, your life would be undefined on if, if you would survive that cliff drop off. So we kind of saw that one undefined, but we're going to look more in depth at these slopes as we move forward. So first, let's kind of play around with this formula. It says find the slope of a line given two points. So if I have two points, such as negative 2, 6 and 1, 4, these ordered pairs that we looked at, looked at earlier, and we want to find the slope. Best practice is to first write your formula. So here's my formula just from earlier on the page. Next, label your points. This is an x, y ordered pair. It's the first x I have and the first y I have just because it was written first in the line. Here's my next ordered pair and this is my second x and my second y. You can reverse those if you like. I just very systematic. I want to go in order. I like to label my order pair so when I come back over here to the slope, all I have to do, I don't have to think about it. There's my formula without the variables filled in. I'm just going to plug in these values. 6 is, let's see, 6 is y1, negative 2 is x1. Notice this is a minus from the formula, a negative from the 2. x2 is 1, and y2 is 4. Now that I have written this, I'm going to do my simple arithmetic. 4 minus 6 to give me negative 2. 1 minus negative 2. If you struggle with your negatives, your scientific calculator does have a negative button on it, but this is like adding them together. 1 minus negative 2. These two go together, and you could just say 1 plus 2 to give me 3. As stated earlier, you typically just want to leave this as a fraction. I don't want to go to my calculator and get 0.667. That's not going to help me as we move forward working with slope. So finding the slope is important because if I'm given two points, now I have a slope, and I can move forward with finding the equation of the line, our goal for this section. Another thing I want to emphasize on is just being able to identify the slope and intercept given an equation. Here's one. You can see it's in slope-intercept form, one of the forms we're going to cover. Y is by itself. Everything else is on the other side. This value right here attached to your x, this is your slope. We like to call it m. And this would be your y-intercept. This is your b-value. It's important to be able to identify this. So if it's asked for slope, we don't say the slope is negative 3 fourths x. And we don't even say the y-intercept is 4. Keep the entire value of the negatives with them, but you do not include the variable as you're identifying them. 
So a couple of different things that we can do with slope. We can identify it. We can actually calculate it, which leads us into part B here, point slope form. The last one you can notice, it was slope intercept, and it gave us the slope and the intercept. This one says point slope, and it's going to give us exactly that, a point and a slope. So it says given one point and the slope, using point slope form will lead us to the equation of a line. So third important thing on your little formula sheet, you use while you're doing your homework, slope intercept form, your slope, and now here are the point slope form. This is important because you'll notice I don't have to have two points to figure this out. I only need one. So it says write the equation of a line given slope of negative 3, passing through the point 4, 8, and write the final equation in slope intercept form, meaning at the end of this, I want to have y completely by itself. So as always, I'm going to write the equation or formula that I'm working with. I'm going to identify my variables. Here's my x1, my y1. Now our goal is to get an equation, so we are going to leave some letters in here, this regular y and x, but the other letters we're going to fill in. So I have y minus y1, which is 8, equal to negative 3, x minus x1, which is 4. Now I only have two more steps to get the equation of the line in slope intercept form. I'm going to distribute. So negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Bring down this left side, and then I'm going to move over this 8. Remember doing opposite operation to cross over that equal sign. So I get negative 3x plus 20. Y is by itself. It's in that y equals mx plus b form. So that would be the equation of a line with a slope of negative 3 and a point that it's passing through of 4, 8. I want to do the next example here because not only does it have these steps involved, but it also has finding slope initially um, before you get going. So it says find the equation of a line passing through the points 3, 4, and 0, negative 3. Write the final equation again in that y equals mx plus b form. Well, I have two points. First thing I have to do is identify my slope. So I'm going to write the formula for slope. Formulas will not be given on exams. You will have to know them. So I'm going to label everything. So I'm going to write my slope formula. There it is without the letters in it. y2 is negative 3. y1 is 4. x2 is 0. x1 is 3. Complete your arithmetic on the top to give me negative 7. On the bottom to give me negative 3. Negative over negative. This reduces to a positive 7 over 3. We don't go to decimals and also we don't go to improper fractions. Next step is I'm trying to find the equation. So I'm going to take this slope that I know, this first point that I know, and I'm going to use that new point slope form to help me finish out this problem. So again, I wrote my formula. I'm going to write it with everything but the letters I'm going to fill in. I'm going to fill in these values. Don't be scared of fractions. Just follow your steps. Go slowly. I'm going to distribute, so I get 7 over 3x, no problem, minus 7 over 3 times 3. Use your calculator or use what you know about multiplying fractions. This gives me just negative 7. Add the 4 over to the other side, and I get y equal to 7 over 3x minus 3. So this one did have the added step of having to find our slope to start with, but again, no big deal. We can do that. The next form is not a very familiar form or usable form or graphable form. We normally have to convert it out, but I do want to touch base on it. It's the standard form of a line. It's when you have it in the form of AX plus BY equal to C. When you have it in this form, your A, B, and C are integers, meaning they can be positive or negative, but they cannot be fractions or decimals. The X and Y terms are on one side of the equation, so you can see they're over here, and it's equal to the constant term on the other side. So it's kind of a nice way to get your equation in, but it's not as beneficial as our other ones. So I want to expose you to it, but I'm not going to work any examples leading up to that. These last two are very important because they don't really fit the mold of our slope intercept form or point slope form because they're very basic equations. Um, it doesn't make us compute the slope or anything. So let's talk about vertical and horizontal lines. A vertical line is in the form of x equal to c. When it's in this form of x equal to c, it says c is a constant, 
So that's just a numeric value that doesn't change. And the slope of a vertical line is undefined. We just talked about that. And regardless of the y value on any point of the line, the x coordinate of the point will be your c. So something I want you to notice is, look at this line, this graph right here. If I were to pick a point here, yes, this would be negative 3, 0. Pick a point here, negative 3, 1. Pick a point here, negative 3, 2. You notice all the x values are negative 3. So just writing the equation x equals negative 3 would clarify to me that this is a vertical line going through negative 3. It is irrelevant for me to look at all the different changing y values because just the negative 3 is lining them up to get that vertical line. Similar story can be said about the horizontal line. It is y equal to c, or as I just say, it's just y equal to a number, where c is the constant and the slope of the horizontal line is 0 for any x value of the point on the line. The y coordinate will be c. So you'll notice here's my horizontal line. I just call it y equals negative 2. Again, if I were to pick points along here, this is negative 2, 0, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 2, excuse me, this is negative 1, negative 2, and this is 2, negative 2. You can see they all have, I wrote that backwards, they all have this negative 2 value as you go. And so that's what we're honing in on, and we're going to say this is a vertical, a horizontal line of y equals negative 2. So let's look at this example here, one that we don't have a graph, and we visually cannot see that it's horizontal and vertical. Say it told you to find the equation line passing through the given points. And you're like, all right, I see two points. You start working through this problem. You're like, okay, I'm going to do slope. You're just following your rules and procedures. And so this gives you 4 minus negative 3 over 1 minus 1. You just keep working through. 4 minus negative 3, it gives me 7. 1 minus 1 gives 0. You go to your calculator in it. It just says error message. Well, this you can't ever divide by zero. This is the case where the slope is undefined. And so we don't come over here and go y equals undefined times x plus b. That doesn't make any sense. Notice these both have an x value in common. So if I'm just creating a line going through these two points, my x values are exactly the same. So my equation would be x equal to 1. This is the case of a vertical line. So it's okay if you're just following your steps and procedures. You start trying to find that slope, but just make sure you know how to interpret this. You can't leave an answer of 7 over 0. But it says what's the slope? Undefined is the correct answer. 7 over 0 does not get you full credit. Lastly, if you're looking for the equation of the line, none of this tells me the equation of the line. x equals 1 is the equation. So just be careful as you encounter these horizontal and vertical lines as you practice through. And the last concept we're going to be looking at is the concept of parallel and perpendicular lines. We'll start with parallel. Parallel lines will never intersect. Thus, they have the same slope. Or you might say M1 and M2, the two slopes you're comparing, are exactly the same. Pictorially is normally where you can kind of understand better the parallel lines. You can see that these are never going to intersect no matter where I space them out or how far I draw them out. And you'll notice just looking at these equations, 2 is what they have in common. That slope or incline or steepness is what's keeping them from intersecting. And so with parallel lines, we say they have the same slope. I am not concerned with if their y-intercepts are the same or not. I'm just wanting to look at their slopes. So if you are wanting to find an equation of a line that is parallel to something given, you're going to identify the slope, substitute, and simplify. So let me show you what that looks like here. Find a line parallel to the graph of y equals 3x plus 6 that passes through the point 3, 0. So I want it to go through this point and be parallel to this line. So what do I need from this equation? I need that slope right there. If this slope is 3, my slope on my new line is going to be 3. Take that with your point 3, 0. Use your point slope form, and you'll be able to find the equation that is parallel and going through that point, which would be y equals 3x minus 3. So just adding in, being able to identify the slope that I need, and then following the steps from previous problems.